Welcome, welcome, welcome to our very spacious Tokyo apartment. This video is sponsored in part by Benina. Hello, if you haven't been keeping up with me on Instagram, then this is probably a bit of a surprise. I'm living in Tokyo for the next three months. We're actually here, me and Luciano, for Luciano's work. He got a three month position as a researcher at a Tokyo university from April till June. And I wasn't about to let him go for three months without me, but because I, my work is on the internet. I am lucky enough to be able to work from anywhere. Anyway, we basically got confirmation about this position and our apartment one month ago. So it has been a hectic, stressful, busy month trying to get everything prepared for moving our entire lives overseas for three months with the added benefit of being chronically ill because when you're chronically ill, it just makes everything, especially moving and traveling, just that little bit more difficult. But we made it and we're here. Anyway, Tokyo apartments are not known for being the most spacious spaces. We actually lucked out and got a whole 30 square meter apartment. Most places that we looked at were actually 15 to 20 square meters. Basically they just consist of one room, a tiny bed, tinier kitchen. So the apartment we ended up with actually has a small living room as well as a tiny bedroom and a tiny kitchen. So we're feeling quite lucky. But it does make me feel like our small two bedroom place in Sydney was literally a mansion. Anyway, 30 square meters is a lot smaller than the space we are used to living in. And when we arrived, the apartment had very minimal furniture. It had a couch, table, TV, bed. That's it. So when we got here, we were like, oh no, where do we put? our things. Like we don't have heaps of stuff, but like where do we keep my sewing supplies, our laptops, my cameras and filming equipment. So after living here for a couple of days, it became clear that we needed some storage solutions if we didn't just want to live among our possessions. So that's when I came up with the idea of sewing some fabric storage boxes. I wanted to make some that can slot underneath the TV cabinet here. Maybe one that can sit next to the bed to keep cords tidy or in this random empty corner of our bedroom that is just sitting here not being useful at all. Annika, how are you going to sew fabric boxes? I'm assuming you didn't take your sewing machine with you. I didn't, but Benina Japan have generously loaned me their B335, which is honestly a perfect sewing machine for a really small space. If you're interested, I'll be talking about this later at the end of the video, but for now, let's get into the tutorial. Let's Marie Kondo this and make some really pretty fabric boxes. First, I'm gonna figure out the dimensions of the boxes I want to create. I want my boxes to go under here. So I measured out this space and what I wanna do is make two boxes that fit side by side together here, each with dimensions of 10 inches wide, 11 inches deep and five inches tall. The template for a box looks like this. So imagine you've cut down the edges of the box and laid it flat. And this is the five faces that make up the box. So from here, I can translate the dimensions that I want my box to be to this flat box to figure out just how much fabric I'll need for each box. So the base is going to be a rectangle. That's the width times the depth. So 11 by 10 inches. And each side of the box will be five inches tall. And then depending on which side it is, it'll either be 10 inches long or 11 inches long. That means the piece of fabric that I'll need in order to cut out this box template is five plus 11 plus five equals 21 inches on this side and five plus 10 plus five equals 20 inches on the other side. I'm going to add a whole inch to both sides for a seam allowance and bam, too easy. So for each box of the dimensions that I want, I'm going to require a rectangular piece of fabric that's 21 by 22 inches. After figuring this out, I went to a fabric store, use a wire, looking for fabrics that are heavyweight, so canvas, non-stretch, denim, etc. Apparently this fabric has the scent of Scandinavia. <laughs> Hot tip, bring a luchi with you to wheel around your fabric bin. So I ended up getting this plain heavyweight, 100% cotton non-stretch denim for the outside of the box. This pretty mid-weight canvas material for the inside, the lining of the box and thick heavyweight iron-on interfacing that will keep the box sturdy. Then for each box, I cut out a rectangular fabric that's 21 inches by 22 inches. Next, I ironed the fusible interfacing to the denim piece with the adhesive side facing the wrong side of the denim. Next, I'm going to cut out a five inch by five inch square from each corner because five inches is the height that I want my box to be. Hot tip, once I measured and cut out one square, I used this as a template for all the other squares so I didn't have to spend time measuring those out as well and save those cut out squares. They can come in useful, I'll show you in a second. I repeated this for the pretty lining piece as well. Now. 
those leftover squares. I'm going to use the lining squares to make pockets for the inside of my box. To do that, I sandwiched two squares right sides together, and then I sewed them together like this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving a two inch gap down the bottom. I cut the corners off the seam allowance, making sure not to cut through the stitches, then turned this right size out through the gap, making sure to push out the corners. And then I sewed up the gap and I gave this whole thing an iron. I want to sew this to the side of the lining here, but I can't go past here, this kind of invisible line, because that will be the bottom of the box. To figure out where that line is, I folded the flap down like this and created a crease. Now, as long as the pocket is placed above this crease, it'll be fine. It won't be on the bottom of the box and it won't mess up the box's structure. So I lined up the bottom of that pocket piece with that crease and then I pinned it into place and I sewed it around three edges like this. I also used up the squares cut out from the denim and interfacing bits to make myself little mini boxes. Okay, so I still had these extra tiny squares left and I don't know what to do with those other than continuing to make recursively smaller boxes like some drossed esque sewing nightmare. There is a limit to my thriftiness is what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm making these little boxes because I desperately needed somewhere to put my sewing clips because I forgot to bring any container for them. So I made this little denim box out of those scraps with a matching lid. Anyway, back to the main project. Time to put handles on this. I want to put two handles here and here on opposite sides of the box. The handle material is going to be this bag strap webbing. So I'll show you how I did this on one side of the box. On one of the shorter sides of the outside box, I made a mark two and a half inches from the edge here and two and a half inches up from the bottom here. I repeated this on the other side. I then measured the distance between those two marks, which is six inches. And then I added three inches to that measurement to get a total of nine inches. I then cut nine inches of bag strap webbing. And while we're here, I cut one for the other side as well. Okay, so I attached the strap by first placing it right sides down on the left mark here. I pinned this into place and then I sewed it on, going back and forth with a zigzag stitch a few times to make sure it's attached really securely, half an inch from the cut edge of the strap. Then I pulled the strap up and over like this to the other mark on the right. I then placed the strap on top of the mark like this and pinned it into place. Now I'm going to sew it like I did on the other side, about half an inch from the cut edge of the strap here. However, this one is a little bit more difficult to sew on, so watch carefully. After setting the presser foot down on the strap, I moved the strap forward out of the way of the needle with one hand while going back and forth with the zigzag a few times to make sure it's sewn strongly into place. Then I pressed the strap down at the sides, doubling it over at the edges, leaving this bulge of strap in the middle so that I have plenty of fabric to use as the box's handle to get my hand in there and pick it up. Then on each end of the strap, I sewed a little square shape with a cross in it like this. I repeated this on the other end and that's the handles done. Now let's construct this box. For accuracy, although you can skip this step if you want, I'm gonna make a mark with pen where I need to stop sewing at each corner while sewing the side seams for the box. So going from the corner, I'm going to make a mark half an inch straight down and half an inch going straight across. Drawing a straight line that protrudes from both, I'm going to draw a cross where these two lines intersect, here. This shows the spot where I need to stop sewing in the next step. Next, I grabbed the two adjacent edges and I folded them right sides together to match them up. I honestly showed this a lot better when making my mini box cause I could fit it all in the frame more easily. So using my model, the tiny box, this is what you have to do. Once those two adjacent edges are pressed together, I'm going to sew them together using a straight stitch and a half inch seam allowance from the top edges right down to that X that I drew on before. I repeated this on all four sides and ended up with this. It's kind of a box shape, woohoo! I then repeated the exact same thing to make a box out of the lining fabric. So now I have one outer box that can stand up on its own and one rather more floppy lining box. Next, for both of the boxes, I clipped the seam allowance smaller on all the seams that I just sewed and then I turned the outer box right sides out. Now, it doesn't look very box shaped, 
yet, but all it takes is a good ironing to put the box's creases into place. I turned the lining right sides out as well, this is so I can iron in the creases, but it will be turned back inside out before being sewn to the outer box. To iron the creases in place, first I folded down each side from corner to corner. I pressed on this firmly with my iron and it gives me a nice edge to the box. I repeated this for the other three sides. Once that's done, I folded the box wrong sides together along the seam that I just sewed and I ironed that down. Then I repeated this for the other three seams. Now it's a box. It still has a little bit of give at the edges. It is made of fabric after all, but this is what a fabric box should look like. And then I repeated this ironing process for the lining to give the lining shape. Now, time to put the two together. First, I turned the lining back around so it was inside out again. And then I placed the outer box into the inner lining box, which took a little bit of time and struggling because the two are the same size after all. If your box is a rectangular prism like mine, rather than a cube, make sure the outer short sides match up with the lining short sides and the long sides match up with the long sides, etc. Also, the right sides of both fabrics should be touching. I clipped the lining to the outer box at each corner and then along the entire top edge all the way around. Next, I sewed the lining to the outer with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance using a straight stitch and I made sure to leave a gap of about four to five inches along one edge. Then I trimmed down the seam allowance as close as possible to the stitches and then I reached through that gap I left open in the lining and I pulled the box right sides out through it. Now this part is a little bit tricky because the box is quite thick and sturdy but don't be too worried about messing up the box creases because they can be ironed back in. If you're struggling to pull it out go back and seam rip a larger gap at the top of the box. So I got to here where the lining is out of the box and then I pushed the lining back down into the box and there we go, almost done. Next, I rolled the edge of the box so that the lining is just on the inside. And then I ironed this into place all the way around the top edge, including where the gap in the lining is. Then I top stitched around the entire box, starting at that gap that we pulled the box through to close it up and then continuing all the way around the top edge. This is a little bit tricky. I found it to be a real workout for my arms because of how heavy the fabrics are at this point. So go slowly and take your time. After a final iron to make sure the box is looking most boxy, it is done. Storage achievement unlocked. So this took me about two and a half hours to make. So it's a really good project that can be made in an entire afternoon or leisurely over a few days. Now, I'm gonna do a little apartment tour of my 30 square meter Tokyo space. But first I wanna talk about this sewing machine here. Last year, I became a Bernina ambassador. Bernina makes amazing sewing machines. And I filmed this super professional advertisement, like a whole film crew came to my house. And now that out of me is in their stores and in pamphlets and magazine ads and stuff. Like this came with this machine that I'm learning here in Japan, which was a bit of a trip. <laughs> Unboxing the machine, taking out the information and seeing my face. Working with Bernina has been amazing. Although this bit here that you're watching is technically a sponsored spot, I want you all to know that it was me who approached Bernina because before I was an ambassador, I used a Benina sewing machine myself for many years. Before this, I had an entry level Benina Bennett, but even though it was the entry model, it never let me down. This sewing machine here, the B335, it is certainly a level up. So it's above their cheaper entry level machines, but still below the super fancy high-end, does everything for you industrial level sewing machines. Now I talk about this in the advertisement that I did for Benina, which I'll link down below if you're interested in watching. But the difference between an entry level machine and this machine is very noticeable. The way this machine feeds through fabric, ugh. I drool. It's basically like every fabric that I'm using, even if it's satin or silk or something hard to work with, it's like it's just woven cotton. The way each fabric feeds so easily through the machine. There's certainly no bunching up or eating of fabrics. 
ever. And remember when I was sewing on the straps of the boxes back in the tutorial? Yeah, so I just used the standard universal sewing needle. Didn't have to change to a thicker, heavyweight needle. I could sew through two layers of thick bag webbing, one layer of heavy interfacing, and one layer of thick denim. All together with ease. That is hecking impressive. Also, this baby, she purrs. It's so nice and quiet compared to any machine I've ever used before. And it sews at 900 stitches per minute, which is 15 stitches per second, which is also very impressive and very good for an impatient Annika. And finally, while it's a super powerful machine, it's also really compact and easy to move about. It's a testament to the size of this machine that it's really easy to use in a 30 square meter apartment and not get in the way. I love the Benina 335 and its sister machine, the B325, which I also got to try out. Also, while this one is a loan from Benina Japan, I was given one of these um, to keep for myself and it's back at Sydney waiting my return. And I honestly believe that I'll have it and be using it for for the rest of my life. It's just such high quality and I know that bananas are built to last. They're the machine of choice for schools and universities and hospitals where they need something sturdy and reliable. And finally, you know that I get pretty sad when companies are not at all transparent about who is making their products or where they're being made because that means they're likely hiding something. Well, I'm very proud to say that Benina is totally upfront with where and how their machines are made. They own their own factories and they have videos and photos of all of their factories up on their website. They have a factory in Thailand, which is here, and one in Switzerland, which is here. They're not hiding anything, which is a big thumbs up if you are looking for a product that is made ethically. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna stop harping on about how much I love this machine. I could go on for hours. It is time to do an apartment tour. Let me go get my fisheye lens. It will be needed. Oh, hello. Welcome to our apartment. So here's the little designated shoe only area where you have to take your shoes off. And here I'm switching to my very cute little bear slippers that I got here in Japan. So there's some rubbish in the corner, which is great to see. Don't film that. It's recycling. <laughs> it's recycling. Cool. This is where we keep our shoes. So when you come in, you put Next. your shoes in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you first step into the apartment, on the left here, you have the laundry room. We've got a pretty decent washing machine and laundry powder and like towels and stuff like that sit up there. <laughs> laundry room is very generous. Laundry room is a stretch. <laughs> okay. On my right here, as you walk in, is the toilet. Unfortunately, it's not a Japanese style one, but it does have this cool feature where um, when you flush it, the cistern refills and you can wash your hands here. Woo! Although when you actually sit on the toilet and close the door, your knees do hit the door. <laughs> it is quite petite. And then just past the washing machine is the fridge. Um, firstly, I put this really cute, I found this at a thrift store here in Japan. I think it's a really cute little photo, but um, Luciano disagrees with me, but please back me up. <laughs> it's cute. really cute, right? Creepy. And it's really good and it's not creepy, right? <laughs> I am correct. The fridge is a pretty decent size and we've also got the microwave on top of the fridge and a kettle. And then here in the little kitchen room, we've got the sink and we've got a one burner stove, <laughs> which is really easy to cook on, isn't it, Luciano? Mm, it's a little bit challenging. And then we've got plates and stuff. Um, after they're washed, they kind of, they've got the drying rack, so they drip into the sink. And then we just kind of shoved food and medicines up here, not in a very well arranged way. Maybe we need some boxes up there. Then. Across from the kitchen is the shower room. This is its own little self-contained sort of unit, so it's really easy to clean. You just close the door and you can shower, just spray it around anywhere, it doesn't matter. For the um, bathroom that has a control panel, you've got one for the air circulation for the fan. You can make it um, dry, hot, not so hot, and something. You got the... <laughs> Okay, this one is for the extraction fan. You can seal it up, so the whole thing is a plastic unit that's like kind of airtight. And then you can turn this one on to actually heat it up, like a heater. This one is dry air, so you can put clothes in there and dry your clothes if it's mm. rainy outside. And then this one is cold air for summer if you want to be keep the bathroom cool. And then you can also, you turn this on and that is the water heater and you can turn it to whatever temperature you want for showering. We usually have it on 42 degrees for showering. Yeah. And that's the bathroom. This is the actual unit that we were talking about that you control. <laughs> now let's take you into the main part of the house. The living room. So there's a door that separates. Oh, oh. There's a door that separates the kitchen and bathroom. We've got my sewing machine sitting nicely here on the table. Oh. Now this is a little bit unusual for the Tokyo apartments we were looking for. Most didn't actually have this living room. It was just that 
and then straight to the bedroom. Um, so this is fairly spacious, the fact that we even have a living room at all. We, uh, the apartment came with a couch, a TV, and a table that has like a little extendal, extendal? extendable thingy if you wanted to, I guess, have guests over, although having more than two people in this space would be quite cramped. <laughs> we have a closet, which has my underwear in it, so I don't really want to show anybody. There's an air conditioning unit. <laughs> oh, and here is where I put my boxes. Ooh, 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 such storage, so nice. Yes, I put all my recording equipment in that one. This is how they're actually used, and my fabric in this one. Yeah. Nice. And then finally, this is the bedroom. The bed is actually massive. It's actually two single beds kind of smushed together mm -hmm. to make a big bed. But they gave us some very attractive uh, brown <laughs> and other brown blankets um, to use. But they are quite snuggly and warm, which is good. Would you call this brown? I'd call it like puce. Puce. Mm, what an attractive name <laughs> for an attractive color. This is my friend Buggy. Buggy. Um, um, I found Buggy here in Japan and we're best friends now. And it's not just because I'm missing my dog at home a lot. I actually just, I can't sleep without a plush toy. Yes, I'm 26. Who cares? Aww. Never too old for a plush toy. Hi, Buggy. Hey. Oh yeah, there's even slidey doors that separate the living room from the bedroom, which is pretty neat. And then finally, you can scooch around here. Finally, here's the balcony um, where there is a clothesline set up for us to dry our clothes on. And I guess stand here being cool. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> our balcony um, looks out over all of our neighbors, so we tend to be quite quiet. Out here. It's very quiet in Tokyo neighborhoods. Let's go back inside. <laughs> I'm putting that in the video. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> also, the wall texture is something that's kind of interesting in Japanese homes and apartments. A lot of them have this sort of texture. If you can see it on the camera, it's like fake paper and it's kind of spongy. It's very interesting. Hmm. So that is our 30 square meter apartment. This is kind of the typical apartment that you would see in Tokyo. And we're pretty happy with it. Um, we'll have to do a little bit more storage organization. But apart from that, it's a really good place to be for three months. I really hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you so much to Benina for supplying me with a beautiful sewing machine, the B335. Let me know if this video was useful for you or if you learned something new. And I will see you all in my very next video. But bye for now. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon and Coffee for making this video possible. To support these videos so that I can keep on making them, go to co-hofenfi.com forward slash Annika Victoria for a one-off donation, or to support me on a continual basis, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria. Even if you can only give $1 a month, that is extremely helpful to ensure this channel keeps running.